During the powered phases of the Apollo program, the Saturn V launch vehicle represented the pinnacle of chemical propulsion. However, its development was shadowed by a phenomenon that threatened to compromise the vehicle and its crew before they could leave Earth orbit, POGO. POGO is not a generic vibration. It is a longitudinal dynamic instability characterized by self-excited oscillations. This phenomenon arises when the elastic structure of a launch vehicle and its liquid propulsion system form a closed feedback loop. If left unchecked, these oscillations can lead to structural damage, premature engine shutdown, and unacceptable acceleration levels for the astronaut crew. To understand POGO is to understand the physics of positive feedback. The cycle begins with normal fluctuations in engine thrust, which are characteristic of all liquid propellant engines. These fluctuations apply an axial force to the vehicle's flexible structure, causing it to oscillate longitudinally. As the structure compresses and expands, the propellant feed lines, long columns of fluid with their own acoustic and dynamic characteristics, experience pressure variations. These pressure fluctuations propagate back to the turbo pump inlets, altering propellant flow into the combustion chamber. The resulting change in thrust feeds back into the structural motion. When the timing and frequency relationships align with a natural structural mode, the system becomes unstable and the oscillations grow. The Saturn V was particularly sensitive to this instability due to its unprecedented scale. Extremely high thrust levels, long propellant feed lines, and massive columns of liquid oxygen created a propulsion system with significant dynamic compliance. In early design analyses, the complex effects of turbopump inlet cavitation were incompletely modeled Cavitation increases the effective compressibility of the propellant, lowering the natural frequency of the feed system and bringing it closer to the vehicle's structural modes. As propellant mass decreased during flight, the vehicle's structural characteristics shifted, allowing the propulsion and structural systems to tune and detune naturally as ascent progressed. The first clear evidence of severe POGO on the Saturn V occurred during the uncrewed Apollo 6 mission in April 1968. Late in S1C first stage flight, the vehicle experienced longitudinal oscillations at approximately 5 Hz that persisted for roughly 30 seconds. Accelerations at the command module reached about 6 tenths of a G, exceeding the design environment. These oscillations caused structural damage in the spacecraft lunar module adapter, including panel cracking and loss. Post-flight analysis showed that the dynamic characteristics of multiple engines had unintentionally aligned, amplifying the instability. Werner von Braun later acknowledged that the pogo levels observed on Apollo 6 were unacceptable for a crewed mission and that further work was required before the vehicle could be considered safe for human flight. Although first stage pogo was mitigated before Apollo 8, a different and more severe form emerged in the S2 second stage. During the ascent of Apollo 13 in April 1970, the center J2 engine experienced a violent longitudinal oscillation near 16 Hz. Unlike earlier POGO events, this instability was largely confined to the center engine, which was mounted on a comparatively flexible thrust structure. The oscillations flexed the thrust frame by roughly 2.5 to 3 inches, producing dynamic loads on the order of several tens of G at the engine attachment points. As the oscillations intensified, pressure and acceleration signals driven by POGO pushed engine instrumentation beyond acceptable limits. 
the thrust chamber pressure sensing system interpreted these extreme conditions as a loss of performance and commanded an automatic shutdown of the center engine roughly two minutes early. Post-flight analysis concluded that continued growth of the oscillations could have led to structural failure of the thrust structure and loss of the vehicle. Despite the premature shutdown, guidance compensated using the remaining engines and the S-4B stage, allowing Apollo 13 to reach a near-nominal Earth parking orbit. The mission's later failure resulted from an unrelated oxygen tank explosion, not from POGO. The solutions to POGO focused on detuning the propulsion system, rather than attempting to eliminate vibration entirely. For the S-1C stage, NASA converted cavities within the liquid oxygen pre-valves into surge chambers charged with helium from the tank pressurization system. Because gas is far more compressible than liquid oxygen, these accumulators acted as shock absorbers, shifting the feed line resonance well away from the vehicle's structural modes. Following Apollo 13, a similar toroidal accumulator, charged with gas through a bleed system, was installed on the S2 center engine's liquid oxygen feed line. These changes reflected a fundamental shift in how POGO was treated. It was no longer regarded as a vibration environment to be tolerated, but as a closed-loop instability that had to be eliminated. Engineers developed analytical models to ensure positive damping margins across worst-case combinations of structural, fluid, and propulsion parameters. After these modifications, the remaining Apollo flights experienced no damaging POGO with only minor, non-critical high-frequency vibrations reported. The lessons learned from Saturn V directly influenced the design of later crewed launch vehicles. The Space Shuttle was developed with an explicit requirement to preclude POGO from the outset. Its main engines incorporated integral gas-filled accumulators within the liquid oxygen feed system as a standard design feature rather than a corrective retrofit. Modern launch vehicle development now treats POGO suppression as a multidisciplinary problem requiring close integration between structural dynamics, propulsion, and cryogenic fluid analysis. In retrospect, the POGO effect was not the result of poor engineering. It was an inevitable consequence of pushing structural efficiency and propulsion power to unprecedented limits. By building rockets that were both exceptionally light and extraordinarily powerful, Apollo engineers encountered a fundamental boundary of dynamic stability. Their ability to identify, model, and correct this instability remains one of the quiet engineering triumphs that allowed the Saturn V to carry humans safely toward the moon. If you want more in-depth, technically accurate breakdowns of how Apollo actually worked, from propulsion instabilities to guidance logic, like this video. Share it with someone who appreciates real engineering and consider joining the channel to help keep this kind of analysis alive. Before we wrap up, I'd like your input. Some subjects work best as short, focused breakdowns. Others deserve a longer, more detailed technical treatment. So tell me what you'd like to see more of. Do you prefer shorter videos like this, or would you rather have longer, deeper explorations into the engineering behind Apollo? Leave a comment and let me know. Your feedback directly influences what comes next.